This big bottle is the smelliest. I can I can actually smell it from the bottle top right now. Our noses are noticing that um, these are products that have been rushed out to the market. Purell or Germex, which are big brand names, have been highly formulated to be pleasing to our noses. With the pandemic, a lot of the large brands moved their stock to frontline first responders who are trying to protect against COVID-19. So the resulting shortage awakened secondary market of breweries and distillers who were making alcohol and taking that to make disinfectant. They weren't as thoroughly experienced in turning that alcohol into something usable. A lot of the new products haven't been carbon filtered enough to remove the remnants of processing an alcohol that's derived from organic material like corn or sugar cane. So when you don't have that level of filtration and then also missing the formulated perfumes that might cover up those scents, we are experiencing products that are half complete really from the point of our uh, noses. They are the same thing. They just don't smell the same to our, our noses. Smells like Tito's with uh, Bath and Body Works. Smells like burnt alcohol. Like rotting tequila in a hot car. Like feet and rubbing alcohol. Ugh. <laughs> they really range in smell. Um, some of them smell horrible. They smell like a um, petting zoo at, a, at the county fair. Yeah and have a very barnyard organic smell. The more boutique brands, the expensive ones, um, have really nice scents like eucalyptus. So there's a wide range, but the smaller brands that I've run into, um, the ones that I've never seen before smell horrible. Hand sanitizer that we know today really came to life in about 1997. The company that makes Purell is called Gojo. It was a husband and wife team that had made a formulation in 1946. And it was for rubber plant workers to clean up after working. So it was a much, much more harsher product, but it was waterless and it allowed people working in the fields to clean up very easily. Purell, as we know it, was developed using 70% ethyl alcohol with propylene glycol to soften it so it wouldn't hurt the skin. And that was what we still use today. There are other brands now that basically riff off that same formulation. There's not all too much difference in the content. It's really what they add to it to make it pleasant. I would recommend not doing that. It introduces a lot of variables that might result in a, a sanitizer that's not only uh, less effective, but maybe dangerous to the skin. There are products that can mask the scent, and I was able to try some. And the effectiveness of masking was noticeable. This bottle, which is actually this, uh, with the additive, these are the additives that I was given. So this one is supposedly smells like cucumber, and the additive itself smells like cucumber, added it to this just 1%. Now it smells like cucumber that was fed to a, a, a petting zoo. The short answer is don't do it. There's a lot of opportunity to mix formulation incorrectly and the quality of scent is gonna be hit and miss. I would echo the advice that I was given by Pamela Dalton, who's a sensory specialist at Monell Chemical Senses Center. We should embrace the fact that there are malodors. It keeps us from touching our faces. I personally always carry a small bottle of hand sanitizer wherever I go when I leave the house. As soon as I come back home or I have access to a sink, I will wash my hands because that's just a much safer method of cleanliness. So sanitizer is kind of like your band-aid. It's not a necessity you use it, but soap and water is your best bet. <laughs> it doesn't get it doesn't get any better with time. <laughs> No, I actually love the process of determining smells. I'm somebody who likes smelling really funky odors. I like durian, I like French cheeses. Just experiencing the world through the nose is, is really fascinating. So pleasant or unpleasant, I'm very curious.